Welcome, welcome back to our Omid Yom Welcome to everybody here in Avasalom, Nachal Lachish, 33 Ramad B'Chemesh. Everybody who watches us on YouTube and, of course, to our anytime. Welcome to all of you. We're going to have another Himer Tzashem, very interesting more to learn today. More and more about Maiser, about taking the tenth part of your food, of your grains, of your produce. When exactly does one have to take Maiser from the fruit? At what stage of growth? So our sugya, now we are in Daf Pei Tes Amud Aleph. The line starts with the word Delav Gidule Karka Ninu Tanya Idach Daish. The, the line, the second line we're in today, starts with the word Daish. Okay? Daish, that is it. It's not Daesh, it's Daish. What does Daish mean? The Torah tells us that, and we started by speaking about basically animal rights. That was the other topic. When a person employs, so to speak, an animal such as a bull, an ox, and the ox is threshing in the granary, in the threshold, then what? Then the person is not supposed to muzzle it, not supposed to close its mouth, to uh, to gag it, to, to uh, muzzle it, so the animal should be able to eat as much as it wants, right? That is, loy tachsam shol bedishoy. We compared it to another similar mitzvah say of what? allowing your human worker, allowing your worker to work in the field and eat while he works, meaning as he picks the fruit, is allowed to eat. And not only when the fruit are being picked, also later, as long as the fruit are not chayv b'maiser, the stages after picking, until the, the until it's a finished product, which is roi for maiser, during that time also the person, the worker, may eat from the fruit. Now we're going to see a b'raiser regarding that. Tanya <laughs> Tanya Idach. Uh, before we continue, before we continue, I have two things to mention about yesterday. First of all, yesterday I made a slight mistake, but that caused a big mistake by some people. So I have to uh, basically recapture what I said. I said yesterday that, and that's so it sounded like in the Gemara actually, that when a person gathers the wheat in the field, that's already called Gemara Melocha. Right? That's called Gemara Melocha. Right? Now for my said, that is not Gemara Melocha because you corrected me. That's not true. Only once it's once it's gathered, what do you still have to do? You have to thresh it, you have to winnow it, you have to make sure that it's nice and all nice and clean. Boire, all the malachas of Shabbos are involved. And then once it's nicely memuach, once it's nicely set in a box, in a carton, whatever, and the face are, the face is smooth, in other words, it's smooth and that, only then it's chaiva So So must be that's what the Gemara meant. That's simple. That is the Gemara Malocha. Another nikud I want to share with you before we continue, we said yesterday that if a person milks the cow, are you is he allowed to have, you know, a sip while he's milking the cow? No. You've been following us? Yeah? No? Ah, oh, well. Okay, he's not allowed to, he's allowed to milk, he's getting paid for it, but he's not allowed to have some, you know, coffee with the milk and milk with the coffee. Why? Because the behemoth is not going to do the cow cow. Some of you may have general knowledge, and unfortunately that's a very sad mistake, some people say, they will tell you, there is a machloikes, whether an animal is gidul karka or not gidul karka. What does that mean? As we all know from the food chain, we all learned that in elementary school, right? Yeah, the what? That there is a chain of, of food in, in, in creation, right? You know, the animals, they eat the grass, and then the predators, they eat the thing, you know, the animals, and then the scavengers, they eat the body, all very nice. So the Maisa, Halacha recognizes that, and the Gemara in Eruvin says, Regarding Meister Sheni in Yerushalayim, you're supposed to eat something that grows from the ground, as well as you can buy from that money of Meister Sheni, you can purchase also meat, but not fish. What's the difference? Meat and fish, well, because meat is nicer. No, meat is really considered to be Gidula Kalka. Why? Because last time we checked, cows and sheep and goats, whatever you eat, and chicken, they eat from the ground. They're vegetarian. They eat Gidula Kalka. Therefore, indirectly, they too are Gidula Kalka. Okay, I over here, we just saw yesterday at the beginning of the Omo, the different story. We saw that milking is not considered as Gidul Karka. Why? Right? Question. Question the Toysus asks in many places, we're showing him, here we see Gidul Karka, an animal is not Gidul Karka. In other words, when I pick the cherries, you know, or I pick the apples or the cucumbers, I'm allowed to eat as a worker. When I milk the cow, I'm not. So you see, all of a sudden, the cow is not Gidul Karka. <laughs> it's possible two different cases. Over here, says Toysvist, because the Torah specifically says Daish, the Torah is being very specific and says 
only gidule karka, only something that grows from the ground, because threshing only applies to kernels of of of, of cereals, wheat, barley, buck, not buckwheat, okay, whatever, spelt, uh, yeah, rye, I don't know all of them in English, whatever, yeah, v'chule, yeah, I, whatever, I forgot, all, all those, that's daish. When the Torah is being specific and says, listen, mister, you give your animal to eat or you work to eat from something from the ground, it means only from the ground. Cow doesn't grow in the ground. There's no cow tree. People would like to have, you know, meat tree maybe, but that thing doesn't exist. The Schenken by my by Meister Shani, the, the Torah is not specific. The other Torah actually does say Bokor Tsoin, Yain Veshechar. Then the Gmar, the Torah is more general in its description, more general, more generic, more, more generous. And therefore, there we say, aha, animal fat, animal meat is also considered Gedula Karka because there's a Torah is less specific. When is there Mechlokes Rishonim about Gedula Karka, animal yes or no Gedula Karka? I happen to be learning this now in the morning in Iyun, when it comes to Shabbos. That's a Mechlokes Rishonim. I'll ask you a question. Are you allowed to milk your cow on Shabbos? No, that's true. Enochanam, 100% no. Why? Which one of the 39 does that belong to? Squeezing is not an Avmelocho. I'm sorry to be so. No, why, why aren't you allowed to milk it? Unless you call the Goy. Why aren't you allowed to milk it on Shabbos? Why not to milk it? Yeah. That's, which one of the 30? You're not allowed to milk an animal on Shabbos. Oh, some Rishonim say it's Dash. Now Dash, which is what? Threshing. <laughs> that's our guy. I Dash is Gidule Kalka. Same many Rishonim. When it comes to Shabbos, the Torah is less specific. And therefore, because an animal eats from the ground, yeah, therefore it's considered to be like wheat or barley, just like you can't take the wheat. This is dash, look at me. Boom. When there's something that originally grew inside its place, its case, which may be the udder of the animal, or maybe the chaff of the kernel, yeah, when I take it out, where it originally grew, don't confuse it, boy, do me a favor, okay? It, where it grew originally, where it was stored originally, that's dash. I, this is from the ground, this is not from the ground. Sam Rishonim say, no, this is, again, a general description of the Torah. The Torah never told me Dash in Shabbos. There are no psukim about it. Other Rishonim say, no, it's not because of Dash, because of many other melochas. There are seven, seven different obvious melochas that can be connected to milking on Shabbos. Could be Memareach, the, the Rabbeinu Tam says, Rashi brings down opinion that it's Boirer, Koitzer, Goizes. You're right. The mainstream opinion, like the Rambam says, it's because of Dash, because the mainstream opinion, which is some of the Toises, Rashi and Rambam, they say that milking on Shabbos is a tolda, yeah, is a, is a, is a byproduct, yeah, of the prototype of the Av called Dash. Why? Because on Shabbos, some Rishonim say an animal is viewed as Gidule Karka, as opposed to here, and therefore milking it is tantamount to taking something from its place of growth. That was a little sheer. I went on a tangent because, you know, you may be, you may like it or not, but this is had. This is what I've been learning in the in the morning now in the Iyun, and not in the Kiyos. Rabbi, right? Yeah, what's your question? What happens if the animal is bizarre? If the animal is suffering and he does, if he don't milk it in Shabbos, you either call a goy, and there's a whole thing you have to give him something. The Biyolocha says even an apple, give the goy something, or the goy would either take the milk or give you the milk, but he you sh he should be remunerated. Or if that's impossible, you know, the guy happens not to be around, you're in the middle of a moshav in Eretz Yisrael, and all the Filipinos went home, then what Then what you can do is put some bleach or something, put some, uh, some yeah, yeah, something that would make the milk uh, disgusting, and then your chaliva, your milking is melocha shen gufa. You're not milking it for the milk, you're milking it for getting rid of it. Getting rid of something on Shabbos is also dorobanon, Rabbanon, in case of Tzar Bar Lechaim, allowed it to be flexible. Or you can maybe even take afterwards the bleach away. We're not learning the details now, but that's, generally speaking, what you should do. Okay? There. Let's not go more on a tangent. The Seder. That was a good question. Tanya Yidach. Another b'risa regarding Lotach Som Shobed Daish. The Torah specifies that the type of melocha that the worker gets to eat from is Daish, both worker and animal. And the Bryce Sedarshans look like this. Ma daish meyucho, just like daish is specific in a way that Dovel Shabishas Gmar Melocho, Poil Oichel Boin, daish is called Gmar Melocho. It's Gmar Melocho, it's the end of the Melocho, and a Poil eats in it. You should ask your question now. Threshing, that's not the end of the process. It's not true. Absolutely not, right? After threshing, it's all extremely messy. 
you have to winnow it. Today it's done much more sophisticated. It's true. The combine, you take it to the wind, right? It separates. Then again, there's separation. And then you peel it, and then you put it very nicely in the box, right? So why is that called Gmar Melocho? Oh, the Mechlok is Rashi I'll tell you that the general answer is Gmar Melocho in this, in this context means any stage past the detaching, okay? Gmar Melocho means the stages that are on the way to Gmar Melocho, meaning I picked it. That's the end of stage one. It's not in the field anymore. It's not in the tree anymore, right? All the stages between picking and the final destination being nice and tidy in the box, they're all called Gmar Melocho. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, let's say you take a plane, uh, <laughs> four plane rides. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Your last journey may be two hours, but you're finishing your journey, right? You did not yet finish. You are finishing. You get what I'm saying? Here too, yeah, as you go along, all these actions, not regarding my sir, regarding eating is called Gmar Melocho, and you're allowed to eat. So too, any stage which is picking and beyond picking, a poil is allowed to eat. Yotzo, excluding what? A menakish b'shumim uba b'tzolim. A person who takes, the, let's say there are shumim, what shumim b'tzolim? Garlic and onions that grow in the ground. And your menakish, what's menakish? To weed, let's say you have those b'shumim b'tzolim in the ground. You weed the bad ones from the good ones. Well, what, what do you weed? Weeds. So we think, right? You take out the bad weeds, and that's what you do. Since this is absolutely not the finishing line yet, right? Yeah, the garlic and the, and the what's his name? The, the, and the onions are not yet ready to eat. You just weed as they grow along. That's not gmar melocha. And poil ochel bahem. So the poil that you hire in order to weed the grass, weed or take out the bad thorns from within the shumim and betzalim or anything else, that is, that person is not allowed to eat anything. He's allowed to eat his own sandwich. He's not allowed to eat from the produce because that's not marmalocha. It's still attached to the ground and way before the finishing line. Frag the Gemara, that's a nice drosha, but Lamali, why do you have to go like that? Why do you have to darshan from Daish to this? It's a Mephorsha Posuk. It says, <clears throat> who we saw outright in the Torah. What did the Torah say? The Torah said you're allowed to pick the cherry and eat the cherries or the apples, but to put it in the clean, you're not allowed to. What did we say? What did we learn from that? That the stage of malacha that's allowed is a stage in which I would, yes, put it in the clean, meaning picking. <laughs> when you put it in the clean, not when it's half ripe and half not, right? You only put it when it's fully ripe and no. So why do you need to learn from Daesh? You can learn simply from the actual local postal over here about a worker. Don't put it in the clean, meaning you're picking. <laughs> And that I would know, obviously, that if I weed, right, if I weed grass, bad grass, bad weeds out of the half-cooked thing, of the half-ripe thing, then I do not eat. Why do you need like that? Answer the Gemara. Tzricha. You need that extra posu. Why? What does that mean? I'll translate. You take out the small ones, the small onions, from within the big onions, alim is strong and big, which means, explains Rashi as follows. It's uh, it's not complicated, we just have to understand it. Basically, <clears throat> imagine yourself, you have like a garden patch with big, with, no, 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 excuse me, with all types of onions, and you're an expert, agriculturist, you know, your farmer, you know that some of those garlics have potential to be a god will be soil. Some of those garlics or, or onions, they will be big and strong and hard, you're going to charge a lot of money from Osher ads for buying those, right? Some of them are small and will always remain small. And if they stay, they're never going to be, they're good, no good nicks. There's no hope for them, yeah? Okay? And those small onions, if you leave them in the patch, they'll be like parasites. They will not enable the big ones to grow as they can. You get what I'm saying? Now, those small ones are not dirt. They are not grass. As you pick them, you have two things in your mind. You pick the small ones. Now, the big ones are not yet ready to eat. They're not yet ready to eat. So you pick out the small ones. They're all in the middle of the stage of growth, right? The middle stage. You pick the small ones thinking, oh, I'm getting rid of the less good ones of the class B in order to let the other onions grow much more and better. Oh, so but that's tricky. Why? It's Gemar Malocha and it's not Gemar Malocha. Because the big ones I'm going to leave for a few more, I don't know, days or weeks. I don't know how much it takes yet. The small ones, I will eat, 
but they're not good quality. Ah, so that's tricky, tricky. On one, I'm playing both games, I'm wearing two hats at the same time. I'm picking some of the small ones and I will eat them. You know, the small, they're good for, I don't know, adding a little bit for, they're good for frying a little bit, you know, but not, no, no serious supermarket will buy them for me. On the other hand, my main kavano is still to let the main part of the garden patch grow bigger. Oh, that is a question. For that, I need an extra postix to tell me that at that in between stage, you're not allowed to eat. But I wouldn't have known that from El Kaliachalotitan because I do take the small onions, small but not quality. I do put them in the Kli. Haviman would be the poil would say, I'm entitled to it. It says in the Chumash El Kaliacha. I would tell the guy, no, it has to be like Daish, but it's fully, fully ready, the whole thing. Since this is not really full, your main kavana is to let the other ones grow much more, much bigger further. Oh, that's not called general, real marmelocha, and therefore you're not allowed to eat. Okay, so that's good. Tanya Idach, now we have, oh, now we're going to have to, we're now going to enter the main question of today about Maestras and Chala. Tanya Idach, another brysa, all these brises, the old darshan, one word. What is that? One word, daish. Yet loy tachsam sho be dishoy. Why is the Torah telling me daish? Says the brise, daish. Ma daish mi yuchadova shaloy nigma melachto le as we as I told you. Daish, when you thresh and you finish the threshing, yeah, you tell your ox, good boy, fine, gamarnu, finished. Then what? Is it ready to take maisa from? No, it's not. You still have to do many things until it's properly a finished product from Isa. And poil oichel boy, the worker eats from it. How do you know the worker eats from it? Because we know that the ox eats from it. And we compared human beings and animals, right? Because, yeah, we're makish the choysem lenichsam. Af, so too, kol shalonigma melachto lemaiser, poil oichel boy. Oh, which means anything that is on its way to be finished, but not yet finished. It's about to be, it's in the process of being finished, but not yet finished. A poil is allowed to eat. So all the stages between when it's cut, I'm already allowed to eat. As Yaakov Schlesinger said correctly, it's really all one continuity. I call it two stages, and so to, to does the Mishnah. But the Mishnah, it's all one, there's all one continuity. Why? You pick and you can eat. And after picking, all the work you do, collecting, threshing, all the malachas you do until it's nice and ready in a nice box, nice and yakish and orderly, Everything up until then, you're also allowed to eat. That's what we learned from Daesh. Yeah, Daesh is an in between stage. Very nice. Yotza, excluding what? Yotza ha boidel betmorim uba grogois. Boidel betmorim uba grogois means a person has a pile of tmorim, a pile of dates, a pile of grogois, which are figs, and now they're bets um, ready. But you still have to bodel, you have to like separate them a bit. Yeah, they're ready for my sir. Yeah, maybe they're even indoors, whatever. And now you just take a fork and your some kind of utensil and you separate between them. Yeah, but it's not significant. Yeah, it's already chai b'maiser before that. And that stage of il v'nigmer melachto l'maiser because before you separate it a bit with your fingers like that with the fork, there's already nice enough and tidy enough. It was already chai b'maiser and poy lochel boy. You passed the deadline. You passed the, the finishing line. At that point, mister, don't you can touch, <laughs> but don't eat. Yeah, okay, very nice. So Meiser, as we knew all along, this is a source. The source is, as long as it's not finished for Meiser, which I call Miruach. Miruach is a classical one, but there are many other Miruachim. As long as it's not properly finished, you can eat. Once it's nice and finished and tidy, even if you have another touch up to add and tidy a little bit more, you know, some people always yakish need the extra sidur. At that stage, it's already finished for Meiser, and you don't eat from it anymore, Mr. Poyer. Okay, very nice. Yeah, good. Yeah. Biter. Yeah. Okay. Now comes the Gemara with another Bryson. Track the Gemara. So what did we learn up until now? What's the cutoff point? What's the point in at that point we say hands off to the poil once it's ready for my sir? Okay. So let's imagine before we get to the next Bryson. Let's say I have wheat, very, very, very classical wheat that grows. Wherever, even in Chutzlaret. Yeah, that's another question, actually. Let's say the wheat grows in Eretz Israel, And what? The wheat is now ready to take Meiser from. Yeah, the Ruach, nice, tidy, shiny, peeled, all nice. At that point, the poil, sorry, mister, hands off. Yeah, that's past Daesh. Daesh, you said, but wheat and barley. Okay. Frag the Gemara, Da'atanya. 
Yeah. I don't know. That's another question. Okay. For example, one question. It says outright that another bride says mafush black and white that a person who separates the tzmorim and groigrois, meaning the the dates and figs and the poil is allowed to eat from it even while he separates them. And we just said otherwise. Otherwise, we said that if he separates them, it's already past the finishing line. What's going on? Omar Papa kitanya hi betuchlani. That Rice spoke about tomorrow. Some tomorrow in Grogos are Tuchlani or Chotalot, which means Yelak yeah, Chitul. Basically, a Tmarim and a Tmarim, I think it exists today also, if I'm not mistaken. I was once in a, in a grove like that. Some of the uh, of the fruit, of the of the dates, of the figs, they don't grow well on the tree. They, they remain unripe. You have to give them special treatment. You take like a, like what you use in a, in on Sukkot, right? We use like that Koishikol. We use the thing to hold the, the lul of an esrag. Imagine yourself, this is closed from the bottom. You basically have like a bag made out of, of the leaves of the lulav, yeah? And that is hot over there. It's closed. It's encased. And that's where you put the tmarim to give them the extra boost. In other words, they can't ripen on the tree. You have to give artificial ripening by putting them there in a hot place, maybe with oil, without oil. But lamaisa, there is, yeah, oh, those are not yet ready. If you separated those, yeah, of course you can still eat. Why? If you separate them while they're in that bag, man-made bag, they're not yet finished because they're not even ripe. <laughs> if something's not even ripe, right, you want to eat it when it's not 100% ripe. It's your problem. Yeah. Well, if it's not yet 100% ripe and you separate them, of course you're allowed to eat. It's not gemar malacha because before we speak about tithing, first of all, it has to be fully ripe and it's not. Amen. At that stage, you can still eat it. But normal tomorrow, that are nice and good and in the box, yeah? Once, just because I separated a little bit of extra after it's finished, at that stage it's too late, and they probably not eat from it anymore. Okay? By normal tomorrow. Now comes the big question. Now comes the big question. Tanya Idach comes another Bryce and tells me like this, the following. Daish, l'tach sumsho bedishoy, threshing. Ma daish meyuchad dovel shelo nigma malachto lechalo, lechalo, upoel oichel boy, Oh, Daesh is something that what? The chala wasn't yet taken from. And that's why Paul is allowed to eat from it. I've called Dovo Shalom Gimam Alachtoi Lechala. Paul Oichel Boy, Choson Vechala. What does that mean? We're learning here a whole different story. Yeah, the what? That if the person eats from something past Chiyub Chala, when is the person Mishayat Bechala? At what stage? Does one have to take chala? Enlighten me. When you start the dough, it's called gilgul. When you start kneading, when you start kneading, mixing and kneading, kneading with a K before, that's when you have to separate chala. Men can do that too. Yeah. So then, So what are we learning here? As long as it's not chayv b'chala, then the poil may, may eat, is allowed to eat from the produce as long as chala wasn't taken. Okay, Yot's excluding who's not allowed to eat. Alash, the one who needs. The Mekatef, the one who organize, who who, no, who braids it. Plates it, how do you call it? What my wife does on Friday. What? Plating, shapes it, shapes it nicely. That Mekatef and puts the oil and puts the garlic, whatever. The Oife and the baker. Basically from kneading onwards, because kneading is a stage of the cut point of Chala, Past kneading or from kneading already, you're not allowed to eat. Then boy, a poil is not allowed to eat from that point. This is a contradiction from the previous brisa. The previous brisa told me, let's look at the process. If you know Hilchas Shabbos, even basically the first eleven melachas mentioned in the Mishnah, famous Mishnah in Shabbos of the how many melachas are there in Shabbos? Uh, Thirty-nine melachas. Yeah, the first eleven are basically a nice sheer in agriculture on what you do from stage zero till the ba- the last stage of baking. What do you do in order to get Moitzi Lechim and Oretz? That's how I put the 10 fingers. There are 10 words in the pot of Moitzi Lechim and Oretz. And there are 10 uh, dargas that the eight sadas went down. Because these 11 are really 10 because two malochas are very similar. And, and therefore, yeah, there are 10 stages, which are 10 levels of Ruchnius for the person to get from, not for the person, for the wheat getting from nothing, from from uh, from uh, plowing 
all the way to baking. All very nice. Now, so let's follow that. What's going on here? There's a whole a hole over here. At the beginning of the first bride, so told me what? The ones it's set and nice and it's ready to be nice kernels. Nice kernels. Oh, don't touch. Eh! It's already ready for my sir. Mr. Poyle, hands off, please. I'm sorry. Your rights are over. Game over, right? And then the other bride sings a different songs altogether. The other bride tells me what? That until I bake it, no, excuse me, until I need it, needing included, I'm still allowed to eat. How many malachas in between? Well, grinding. Last time I checked, you don't make a challah from flour, if I, if I look correctly in the kitchen on Friday, right? You make it from flour, not from kernels, right? So you have to do grinding and also sifting. You have to, uh, sieving, I'm sorry for the sifting, sieving, whatever, is it? everyone likes me? Okay, say that. <laughs> Kids, sir, you do meraket, you use the, the sieve, yeah, in order to what? To, uh, to clean it. Oh, so when a person actually grinds, I'm asking a question, a person who's a grinder, he wants to eat a little bit of, of kema, you know, whatever, some people like it, or he wants to eat it in the sweet way. Yeah, let's say a person is sieving, sifting, and what is he allowed to eat? Yes or no? The first bride says, no, you're not allowed to. Why? Because that's past the miruach. The second bride says, no, 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 no. Go ahead. As long as it's not dough that's been kneaded, then you're allowed to, yeah, then you're still allowed to eat it. It's a steer between the brises, yeah. Then the real brises step up, please. Yeah. Answers the Gemara, answers the Gemara, loikasha. It's not difficult. Yeah. The chutzlar, it's a skin on the lake of Meiser. Oh, that mitzvah of allowing your worker to eat also applies in chutzlar. It's, you have a field in upstate New York, right? Some Jews have fields there, I've heard, right? The farm, yeah. So that you have one, yeah. So then, okay. Then a person who's a Jew and he's employing another Jew, the Allah applies to him also. Ah, but there's no maestress. There's no maestress in Chul. And therefore, the answer is very simple. Really, maestress is the cutoff point in Eretz Israel where you take maestress. Where you take maestress, where maestress applies in the Halig Eretz Israel, then what? Maestress is the cutoff point. And therefore, there in Eretz Israel, has the Meruach, which is the finishing line of maestress, would tell the worker, Mr. I'm sorry, game over. Masha'inken in Chul, in Chul, there is no Maiser, but there is Chala, right? You take Chala in Chutzar, it's a big, a fresh Chala event all over the world, right? From Johannesburg all the way to, I don't know. Yeah, then what? In Chul, there is Chala, Chala in Chul, yeah, same word. And therefore there, the process goes up until Chala, yeah? And then you, the poet can still eat until it's Mishal B'Chala. Correct the Gemara, you realize that I'm tricking you here completely. Are you really Chayv in Chala in Chutzar? Yes or no? It's not so simple. Okay. Frag the Gemara. Oh, we have Talmud Chachomim over here. Yehachi, if so, excuse me, says the Gemara. Chala nami leika. If you're in Chutzar, there is no Chala. You can look at the Tosis because it's very easy. Right next door to, right next to the words of the Gemara. says Tosis, the Chala b'chutzar tlave l'amid rabbonon. You do take Chala in Chutzar, in gold is grain, and in Lakewood, you take Chala with a brocha. However, it's the rabbonon. It's the whole story. B'chuleh. But it's the Rabbanon. And we are learning now Din Doraisa. <laughs> How can the Torah talk about the Dorabanon, right? We are now learning Halachas Doraisa. This business of the poil eating and the indicators of when he can stop eating, when should stop eating, are what? Chala and, and Maiser. This should all be on a level of Doraisa. Don't bring me Chala of Chutzlarz, which is the complete Dorabanon invention, right? By the way, why is it so? Just as an aside, today I'm going a little bit on a tangent, yeah? Why is it so that Rabbanon were not Goizer? Meister in Chutzarts, yeah? You have a field, you know, outside uh, London, yeah? You have a field, you don't have to take Meister, but when you bring it home, the wheat, and uh, and your wife needs the dough, then she has to take challah. What's the difference? The difference is, as far as I remember, I didn't hazard it, but who remember it's from, I think it says it's in tradition, I'm not sure, it says it somewhere. The difference is very clear. When people plow the earth, and everybody that's Jewish, and knows what Jewish means, we all know there's mitzvahs at kluyos boets, mitzvahs that are related to the ground, to the land. You don't have to be a genius, you don't have to go in Vilna or Lahavdil Einstein to know that when I plow my field in England, America, Chile, then what? This is one land where I'm potter me my sir. Berz Hashem, I'll make aliyah, my field in Eretz Israel, I see it's in the field, the, the wheat is in the field, you don't have to be blind, you know, you see it's there. The difference is very clear. So even though you don't take Meister from your field in England, you do take Meister from a field in uh, near, uh, I don't know, Kirchmone, right? But She'enken Chala is confusing. 
Chala's mitzvah tluya baaretz, but it doesn't seem that way, right? Where does a woman take challah usually? At home. Yeah, the home is the home. Her home in uh, Buenos Aires looks more or less like a home in uh, in Yerushalayim. Yeah, in other words, it's not done in the field. It's done in the house, and it's not b'mikra. The chiyuv is when you need it, yeah? You need to take challah when you need, one without a K, one without, yeah? So then Lamaisa, the difference is very it's very confusing, right? The woman would say, you know, last year I didn't take challah. Why should I take challah over here? I don't see the connection to the land, right? She's in a very nice kitchen, air-conditioned, with, you know, makore. Ma and therefore, Chacham made a gzera that in Chutzarts you have to take challah to avoid confusion. So when you come to Eretz Israel, you'll remember and you'll take challah, which is the Olaisa. That was really a little bit of a tangent just to give. And again, I have to check the source again, but that's what I remember generally. Because we're still in a question. Hey, excuse me. Don't let me fool you. We are still in a question. Why did the Bryces contradict themselves? One Bryces said, I don't tell them Chutzarts because we're not dealing here with Chutzarts. We're dealing with Eretz Yisrael, where Meister applies, and Chal applies only in Eretz Yisrael, with Eretz And therefore, where's the cutoff point, please? Is it Meister, or is it Chala? Ela, answers the Gemara, unbelievable answer. Both prices relate to Eretz Yisrael. Only here we have Chiyuv of Chala and Meister, the Eretz Don't be confused between the prices. Everyone loves each other. Besheva Shekivshu, Besheva Shekilku, one of the prices speaks about the first 14 years of the existence of Bnei Yisrael, the first aliyah from Mitzrayim, from Midbar Sinai, led in by Yehoshua, yeah? The first seven years they were busy conquering the land from the Shiva Samomim, they didn't kill them all, that's besides the point, but they're conceptually busy by Kivshu, by conquering, yeah? By conquering the land, don't tell the UN, don't tell the UN, Shh. don't tell the leftists in America, but we conquered the land, what, for seven years it took us to fight against the Shiva Samomim. The Sheva Shechilku took them seven years to actually divide the land between them themselves, between the different Shvatim, until each one got his, you know, parcel of land. It also took seven years. <clears throat> now Rashi says it's not just a Mikra. For the first 14 years, the Mishkan was only in the Gilgal, which was less important. The real Chosh of a Mishkan came to Shiloh, which I spoke about many times, the big fancy one in Shiloh, not just fancy, also halachically as more important, that was only after 14 years. That's when they arrived at Chilo, and oh, so now, what does it have to do with anything in this first 14 years? The halachic status of the land of Israel during those 14 years was very, very interesting and very specific, very particular. Why? Wow. During those first 14 years, because it says, Ki shavtem, once you come to the land of Israel, and you sit there, v'chulei, and you sit pretty, and each one knows where he's located, and that takes 14 years, yeah, for a nice Jewish nation, yeah, only then you have to take Maestres, Trumes, change the order, sorry, Trumes, Maestres, Bikurim, Shmita, everything else. The only mitzvah that kicks in straight away, that is in Pasha Shlach, a few weeks ago, Bevoyachem, the Torah there uses a different language, I would say in English, as you come in, Bevoyachem, the Torah tells you, as you come into the land, no delay, you hide in challah right away. You take wheat from the field, no trumas, no maestras, no bikur, no nothing, but when he brings it home to your wife and she grinds and she she makes the challah, midoraisa, straight away. The first second they enter there, it's Israel, the chayv the challah. Why? Because that's what the Torah says, bivoyachem, as you come in. Ah, cool. So really, ah, the brises are really good. Just one brises happens to be historical. One Bryce speaks about history, about the past. <laughs> In other words, when you have the Meiser, which is from the 14th year till forever, you have the Meiser, what's the cutoff point? Meiser. But there was a time in history, 14 years where there was no Meiser, and Chala did apply. Chala did apply. Then the second best, the cutoff point then was Chala. Okay, very nice. The train doesn't go to uh, Lod. I'll take the train to, to Haifa. Center. You take a different train. Now, Okay, not a good example, but Lama Shana. Yeah. Yeah. Now, answer the Gemara, answer the Gemara, answer the Gemara. And actually, the Gemara is not asking a question that completely throws off everything. And it, said, it has to do with your question from yesterday. Correct the Gemara, a very, very key question here. Excuse me, says the Gemara. Midi, at the end of the day, Meiser Kagorim is Meiser, is the need to take Meiser or Chala, by the way. Is that what causes 
Is that the reason why a poil can eat? No. Gmar melacha kagorim. Gmar melacha of meiser. That is what causes him to eat. Let me explain what I mean. Let me explain what the gmar means. And let me explain to you something general in Lomdus. One of the terms that we use a lot in yeshivas is called siba or siman. Many times we confuse between cause and an indicator. This is a super excellent example for all of you to, to learn or refresh your knowledge. In other words, the Gemara says, stop getting hooked about the seven years, 14 years, about Chutz Arzor Yisrael. You're looking for a place and a time where Meister really, really applies. When Meister actually applies, right? Only in Eretz Yisrael? And only after 14 years? Oh, there's Meister? Oh, now we tell the pile. Oh, now that I can take Meister, the Balabas, you cannot eat anymore. Says the Gemara, wrong. There would be a C, but there would be a cause. Taking mice is not a cause for him to eat. What's the connection? You tell me, guys. What, why are we being brainwashed over here? What does Meister have to do with the worker eating? Says the Gemara, Gemara Melacha Kagorim, which means the stage in which the Balabais should take Chala or, 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 or Meister is an indicator. It's an Isiman. It's an indicator, which means once the product is considered as finished, then we tell the poil, mister, I'm sorry, finished, done deal, and therefore, hands off, don't eat anymore. Now, what do we consider this finished? We look in another area in Holocha, which happens to be, I repeat, happens to be my sir, and I say, just like we see, we Google, and we look, what's called finishing? Oh, finishing off is for my sir, when it's nice and tidy, or whatever, then we say, ah, that's called finishing off, so now the poil cannot eat, right? In other words, let's say I tell you uh, we'll meet by the train station, but I'm not looking to go to the train. I'm looking to go uh, uh, to big. Yet, yeah. Let's say the train station is closed. You know, like, oh, but the train station is closed. Who cares? I'm not there in order to take the train. I'm only using the train station as what? As an indicator, as, as a meeting point. I don't care if the train is there of the place. Yeah, it's not that. It's the point. Therefore, the Gemara is asking, stop being so hooked on what is a real chiv, not real chiv. Who cares? It just means to know, yeah, when do what do we call the etzim conceptually a finished product? And therefore the question is now stronger. Now the Gemara is really confusing us because it's only indicator. Where is the real indicator? If you look at all 11 malachas of, of Chitim, yeah, from zero to bread, then I'm even more confused. Which conceptually, which conceptually, which point do we call the finishing point? Is it Meiser? Which, not Meiser. Is it Meruach, which would be Meiser? Or is it Chala, which is later? And by the way, guys, I'm, sta- I'm saying now what I said before. This could be in Chutz Aretz too. The halacha of allowing a worker to, to, to eat applies also in wherever you are. New Jersey, New Zealand, wherever you are. New Mexico, yeah. It applies everywhere. Elamai, there's no maizer. Who cares there's no maizer? It's like the train is not there. Who cares? It's just an indicator. And now the question is, what is the indicator? Yeah, one Bryce has said Chala, one Bryce has said Meiser. Answers the Gemara, and that's the final answer for that uh, sugya. Ela Maravina. Therefore, Avina, Ela, what's Ela? We are rejecting what we said before, and we're saying something new. Kroich Vitani. You had, why, why should the Bryce fight? Kroich, what's Karich, a sandwich? Bind them together, bind both Bryce together, and learn it this way, Daish. Oh, really, both are indicators. Both are indicators. In other words, Daesh is before Meiser and before Chala, and the Poil is allowed to eat. What does that mean? What do you mean to indicators? Well, says Rash, Machlokas Rashi and Ritzvot, says Rashi Azoi. It's true that for Chala, for wheat, barley, spelt, uh, rye, what's the fifth one? Yeah, whatever. Chameshes mini dogon. What really? The indicator is the last stage because there is chala. There is better and brighter future, like Rabbeinu Peret said over here about wine. Since we know the destination, my train goes all the way from Lud, Kfar Chabad, Tel Aviv. If I get off in Tel Aviv, that's my final destination. Chala is the final destination of what? Of the last Matnas Anim, Matnas Koyanim. That I give by the dough. That's the indicator. Up until then, if we talk about the dog on about cereal, the poll is allowed to munch. Yes, while he's grinding and while he's sieving, sifting. Aye, so why did we mention my sir? 
We mentioned Misa for everything else that is not challah. Last time I checked, you don't take challah from grapes and not from nuts, not from papaya, not from guyava, not from star fruit. Yet Meiser applies to them, you derive from the Rabbanon. The Torah mentioned that cut of point in the middle of the maslul of the chita to remind you, oh, the train has a stop over here. And some people get off in this stop, meaning many, 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 many fruit and vegetables don't have challah, actually all of them, except for the Chameshah Smilidogon. And the Torah mentions that indication there, the indicator to teach me that for other things, for other things that are not challah or related, that's your cutoff point. So once my grapes or my tamarim or my whatever they are, I'm mixing the Aras and the Once they are be'etzim ready for Meiser, not that I have to take Meiser. This may be happening in Zimbabwe. This may be happening in Burkina Faso, this story. Yeah? Le Meiser, because this would be Meiser, because this would be a good stage for Meiser, Bimela, that's called ready. It's an end of a stage. And we tell the poil, sorry, game over. I hope you enjoyed eating the cherries till now. Now your time to diet has begun. That's Rashi. There's also a ritzvah, but of course I'll be hear you further. Okay. Now comes the Gemara. Now we're done with the Maestras for now. Now comes a new question. Okay. Iboy Luhu, that a question of Bismedlish. I want to remind you, before we start, before we continue, that there are a few limitations. Maybe you want to remind me? What are the limitations that are imposed on the worker when he comes and eats from in the field, in the field, is picking and eating. Can he eat to no end, like stuff himself? No. Achila gas is not allowed. It's tamas are not allowed. Here it's even more not allowed. It would be gzela, by the way, it's true. Now, what else we said are limitations? For example, we said, let's add our grapes. I personally like to eat grapes with yellow cheese. Yeah, you can, you can tell, yeah? So now, okay. Now, is he allowed to take the grape and add a little bit of yellow cheese to each grape? No, why not? He's going to eat too much. When it's only grapes, 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 grapes all the time, then what? Very soon, you know, sooner or later, sooner than later, uh, he won't be able to look at grapes anymore. As my sister told me, Adus, that you heard from people working in Elite back then, they're allowed to eat as much chocolate as they want. They can't look at chocolate after two days, yeah? You're surrounded by it, you allowed it, that's it. They're not allowed to take home, like Halacha. Same thing over here. But let's say to eat the chocolate with something else, you know, all mixed with other things, with strawberry, Every day, a new flavor. Oh, oh, that'll be already too interesting and too enticing. And the pearl is not allowed to eat the grapes. And Rashi actually gives an example, which we'll see later, grapes with salt. I never tried that. Rashi says to add salt to your grapes would be nice and interesting and tasty. I don't know. Today, the all kinds of fusions of tastes, yeah? So to add salt to your grapes, you're not allowed because that would be too, as you call, Moorish. Yeah, you'd want more and more. And that's not allowed. Midoraisa. You're allowed to eat grapes as they are. Okay? Adkan, that's Doraisa. I wasn't mechadish anything. I reviewed what we saw a few days ago. Now the Gemara asks a question and talk of that, on that halacha. Iboy lehu. They had a question in Bismedlash. We have five lines from the bottom of the page. Bov metzia, pei tes amud alef. Pei tes alef is pt8. Iboy lehu. Poel, mao she yehavev ba'ur ve'yoichal. Ah. What about a poel who wants to take the kernels that are raw, yeah, and he wants to toast them to toast them in the ur in the fire and eat them. Toast is much nicer than bread. This is not bread. These are toasted kernels. The kernel, when it's raw, I imagine it's not so nice, not even cooked yet. But if he takes the kernel and he toasts it, mm, that's much more yummy and crunchy. That special crunch. Yeah, when he eats the crunchy one. The question is, is he allowed to do that or not? It's a very long question. What's a question? Continues the Gemara to, to elaborate on the question. Mi havi kanovim vedovor acher. Is it considered like adding another spice, another food item to the anovim, like adding a ketchup to the to the melilois, to, to, to the wheat, and that's for sure not allowed? Oiloi, or maybe not. What's the question, guys? What's the question? On one hand, the poet can say, I didn't add anything. It's the same kernel, just tastier. So when the Torah told me anovim and not anovim with over acher, the Torah said, don't add to the anovim salt, don't add to Adonavim yellow cheese. Don't add to Adonavim yogurt. Don't eat it in yogurt. Don't eat it with the cereal. Yeah, but here I'm not adding anything. It's the same kernel, just nicer. On the other hand, you can say, Mister, what's the point of Anovim plus? The tastier and they're moreish. Well, you achieve the same effect over here, right? 
when you eat the toasted kernel, which is way, way much, much nicer, you're achieving the effect of tastier. So that's a very nice hakira. Do we go by the dry facts or do we go by the idea behind it? Right? And that's a question. So easier is it not allowed to toast the, the kernels, the grains, and eat them. Yeah, he's adding taste. It's not really adding any item. And the ingredients in the box, it says what? 100% wheat, so to speak. Yeah, there is no box. Yeah, you know what I mean? Answers the Gemara, trying, attempting. By the way, that's Rashi. It's just for, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm following Rashi here. Toysa says there are something like that. Inedible. Toshma, Toshma. Come and listen to the following interesting Brisa and try and shed light on that question. Rashi bala bais lahashkos tolim yain the Balabas can play tricks and avoid his workers from eating an ovim, not by force, and not even by signing documents by uh, some scary lawyer. Basically, Balabas is allowed to give his workers a lot of wine <laughs> before they start working, hopefully not too much, yeah, yeah, in order to avoid them from eating too many grapes. Once your stomach is full of wine, you start your day with a nice shiny glass of wine, hopefully they don't get shaker. And then they will want to eat less. That's that's legal. That's okay. I didn't point a gun. I didn't scream. I didn't uh, make them sign things against their will. I just made them not want it. And that's okay. That's allowed. Okay. Now the other way works the same. It works the other way too. Ah, the poilim are allowed to also before eating the grapes in the break during the breakfast. They're allowed to take pot, to take the bread and dip it in the in the salty uh in the seal usually means fish brine. I'm aware of that, but here it could mean fish brine. Seal is also a general word for uh, rote, for uh no for gravy sauce. Yes, yeah, yes, seal is sauce in modern Hebrew. Yes, it is actually. Yeah, you're right, very nice. I'm impressed with your knowledge. Very nice. Seal means fish sauce, fish brine, but seal also means any salty kind of uh of sauce, yeah. Not sweet sauce. So now, oh, what do they do? They play a game the other way. A poil is allowed to make himself thirsty or more hungry, whatever, and eat bread with a with a salat with a with a with that sauce in order to kidesh yochlanovim harbe. He creates appetite somehow. He wets his appetite by eating the bread with those additions before. So later they're really gonna binge and have a lot of anovim. Oh, so what do you see? You see the a person is long. What do you see from here? That it should be okay to toast your kernels. Why? Because what's toasting the kernels? I'm causing myself to eat more without adding another ingredient, without adding a little bit of yellow cheese or a little bit of sugar on the on thing. Yeah. Oh, same thing over here. I'm allowed to cause myself to bring myself to want to eat more in order to eat more. So you see, that's allowed. One second. And says the Gemara, no, that's not a good comparison. It wasn't our question. <laughs> Whenever I had the question that the person as a gavel, as a person, is allowed to be machir himself, prepare himself to open a, a big stomach, excuse me, and have more appetite, that wasn't a question. Because Lamais, you're eating plain grapes. You're following the rules. You happen to cause yourself before the start of the game. So taking steroids before the Olympics is illegal. Here it's legal. You're allowed to cause yourself to do something, be, more, be hungrier, because at the end of the day, you're only eating grapes. That wasn't a question. Of course it's okay. Our question was that doesn't answer our question. Our question was, are you allowed to prepare and change the actual fruit, the actual grain, in order to eat it? That's more similar to the Torah prohibition of adding sauce or adding an item to the grapes. And you're not answering my question still. So, my, what's our look? Good answer to your question. Borch wanted to say the Gemara's answer. Toshma, yeah, Borch Shekivanta. Toshma answers the Gemara. From another bride, or attempts to answer. Okay, Uman, besides being a place in Ukraine, Uman in Halacha doesn't only mean a craftsman, Uman means the line. I wonder if there's a fancy word for that in English, actually. Yeah, the right. Have you ever been to a vineyard? It's one like line of vines, right? All like hanging, draped on. So those lines, yeah, made out of, I don't know, wood or sometimes a thing of a wire. They have a name in, in, in the Gemara's law, it's called Uman. So that line of vines, yeah, Uman, the, yeah, okay, the Poilim are allowed to eat the Anovim, Beroshe Umnu Yashaloim. The Poilim pick, 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 and if they want, they can take the best grapes, because the best ones are where? 
in the far end, in the two extremes of the carom. Why? Inside the carom, it's shady. Outside, they're more exposed to the sun and therefore they're better. So if I'm a worker, I'm allowed to sort of reserve my rights and eat the best ones. Yeah, I work and I choose that for the best ones. In other words, I don't take, does it drive you crazy when kids take only their favorite fruit or vegetable from the salad? Yeah, and they leave all the rest for other people, even if they use a fork. Yeah, right. In other words, here you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to choose the best grapes that are in the corner. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Ooh, ooh. But here it says what? Well, you're not allowed to toast it. You're not allowed to toast your grapes. I don't toast grapes or toast the kernels. Oh, it says outright. Here's your answer. You're not allowed to toast your 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 item. No. So that's that's us, sir. Answers the Gemara. Uh-oh, I'm still unhappy. You know why they're not allowed to taste, excuse me, to toast the kernels of the whatever or or do things to them. It's a bit of malacha. It takes time. If you every grain you take, you put on the fire, I don't know, a match, whatever. Yeah, and you toast it, that takes time. A second, another second, that's on the Khajman of the time balabais. Allah is extremely makbid on people using the work done properly, not being idle in the middle of work for your own needs, right? That's why it's not allowed. So therefore, it doesn't really indicate our it's not indicated for our question. Kikami Bailan, listen to this. You know when our question of toasting applies? Hey that is the Ika Ishtoi Ubonov. Listen to this, it's all family business. Daddy works in the field, okay? He's working nonstop, like a really diligent, good worker. His wife and children are not working for the Balabais, but they're behind him. And every grain he takes, they toast for him. What a loyal family. So now this guy comes to us with a question. Mitzad bitol malocho, I'm not bitol malocho. I pick and pick and pick. Every few grains, oh, oh, I throw hoopah, in, behind me to my wife and kids. While I'm picking very diligently and very swiftly, they toast my stuff, right? So that's not bitol malocho. We work yeah, it overlaps, right? Very nice. Now, are they? Are we allowed to do that? Are they allowed to serve me, my loyal wife? Can she serve me a few toasted kernels, and I munch them as I work? It's not bitul malacha. There's no bitul malacha. He's, he's working very fast, but the question still remains: Is he, or is he, we're still asking the question? No answer. Is he allowed to toast and say, "Listen, the Torah says don't add something to the anovim, like salt, like sugar, like cheese." Yeah. Or do we say no? And therefore, and therefore toasting is fine, not adding. Or say, no, mister, you're it's a combina, it's a loophole. Because really it's much tastier. You're gonna come and eat much, much more. Still a question. My, what's the halacha? Toshma, last attempt to answer the question. It says, Lo yahavhev ba'u. A person is not allowed to toast in the fire, in the flame, the whatever the grains, the yoichal and eat. Don't put it in the ground so it should warm up. Lichmo means to lichmer rachmov. Lichmo means to to heat up. Don't make like a you know, like, like a hole in the ground, like a bow, yeah, like a pit in the ground and store your fruit there. They warm up nicer, become you know, like a crockpot kind of thing. Don't do that. Yeah, you see the same idea of mahavev. You make them taste here warmer, nicer. The loyafrichal gavasela. Here comes old question. Loyafrichal gavasel means don't crack them open. Let's say they're the grapes or apples, whatever. Don't crack them open by hitting them on the cell on the rock. The yoichal. That you're not allowed to do. Question is why? Let's assume now that it's nicer, crunchier, or easier to eat, right? When it's cracked open. An apple, right? Apple, when it's whole, many times kids don't like eating it. You cut it in slices, it's more appetizing. It's closer to the achila. Yeah. So I don't know why. Gmore doesn't know, actually. But right now we say that cracking them open is one of those things you're not allowed to do. It's a kind of improvement you do to the item that's not allowed. The only thing you're allowed to do is mafrich. You're allowed to like go like this with your fingers and actually uh, peel them. You're allowed to peel them, or mafrich could also mean to like grind them. Peel slash soften them. It's almost ground. It's like softer, nicer without the peel, and you can eat them like that. In any event, one second, please. You see what? Before us, you're not allowed to be have a yeah, you're not allowed to toast them, not allowed to put them in the ground, to store them in the ground because it makes them hotter and crack them. All these things somehow improve them. Oh, sir, please, one second. Answer to no. Hosam should be malacha. Same answer. We talk over there that he doesn't have his loyal family around. He wants to do it himself. That's a heck of a lot of time. He's not toasting. He's not making pits in my ground. 
on the expense of my my time, I'm the boss. Yeah, time is money. Yeah, so therefore it's usher. Uh, but otherwise it would be mutter maybe if somebody else does it for you. Still a question. It's also likely to say that way. It's likely to say that the issue is only the time-consuming business and not the actual making it tastier. This alkadatach mishum mitu kupera. If that is because it's nicer and, and sweeter, sela my mitu kupera ika. There was my problem. If you crack it open on the cell, it makes it tastier. Since when? You crack something open on a rock. This week's parsha, the rock had water coming out. Usually that doesn't happen. Yeah, and therefore must be the issue is only because not because you're making nicer, because you're wasting someone's time. Answers the Gemara. No, Don't ask me how. But the Gemara wants to say, and the Rishonim have questions here. The Gemara says, no, when you crack it open by the rock, some it makes it sweeter. Again, I think it means to, there may be like, I don't know, the juice comes out, it looks nicer, more appetizing, I don't know exactly. But the Gemara said, the Gemara still is in a question. The Gemara is in a question now, and we didn't yet resolve the question, the problem. Are you allowed to do other things to the item besides things that are not adding condiments or adding things? Is that allowed if you make it nicer or not? The question still remains. And we'll have to stay in suspense till Sunday. And I'm very happy to your questions. Now, please be here tonight. Tonight is the night. Mishmar night. Abbas Shalom. Lacha Lachish 33. There will be speaks and speeches. Thank you to Parrots for uh, sponsoring the event tonight. There's very nice food afterwards. Very, very nice meal. Thank you very much. Atzlocha, I'm, I'm hearing your questions now. Have a great day to everybody here. Turning time and YouTube. Yeah.